Sup coders, welcome back to another Code with Kylie video. Today we're gonna to be talking about loops in Python. Now loops are super powerful, as demonstrated when Doctor Strange actually visited the Dark Dimension and was able to defeat the villain Dormammu using a loop. Dormammu, I come to fight. Dormammu, Dormammu, Dormammu. But anyways, we're gonna be talking about while loops and for loops today. So let's get started. All right, so the first type of loop that we're gonna see is a while loop. And a while loop is basically executing a set of statements as long as a condition is true. So it looks something like this, while condition, if this condition is true, then you do these statements here. And when this condition is not true anymore, then that's when this while loop ends. So let's look at a quick example. Let's use some numbers because I think that's the easiest way to like demonstrate how this while loop works. So I'm gonna set i equals one. And I'm gonna say while i is less than five, well, first I'm gonna print i, and then I'm gonna say, well, why don't we increment i by one? So i plus equals one. And then at the end, let's print the end, just so that we know that we're at the end. And now if I go to terminal and I go into the right folder, if I execute this while loop, this is what happens. One, two, three, four, the end. So let's see what's going on here. At first, i is one, and we're evaluating i less than five, which comes out to true because one is less than five. So that means we come here and we execute these statements. So we're printing i, so we're printing one right here, and then we're adding one to i. This is basically, remember, this is shorthand for i equals i plus one. So now, i equals two and we evaluate the statement again. While i is less than five, we print i. Well, two is less than five, and so here we're printing two. And then again, we're adding one. So then now i is three, three is less than five, now it's four, we do the same thing, add one. Okay, now it's five. And now we're reevaluating this condition, five less than five. Well, that's no longer true, that's now false. So we don't actually execute the statements here, which is why you see we don't actually print i down here. Instead, we break out of this loop and we exit. And that means that we print the end, which is printed right here. And so that's the basics of how a while loop works. And so there is one little caveat with a while loop is if I take this statement out, so I'm just gonna make it a comment, which means that we don't actually execute it. So right now I'm doing while i is less than five, print i. What do you think is gonna happen? Well, let's try running that. So what's going on here is I actually have to stop this program because we're in an infinite loop, which is dangerous. And now in this infinite loop, it's because this statement is always true. So the only way to break out of it is to actually stop running the program. Make sure that there is a way to change it so that that loop doesn't run on forever. That condition has to evaluate out to false eventually. You will never win. No, but I could lose again, again, and again, and again forever. And that makes you my prisoner. No! Stop! Make this stop! Set me free! All right, so now let's talk about four loops. So in a for loop, you've actually already defined a universe that you're iterating through. Basically, a for loop is used to iterate over a sequence, a list, a tuple, dictionary, set, string. So you can think of this for loop as going through each item in the sequence. Let's use an example. So if my name is Kylie, for letter and name, print the letter. Because we already have a predefined universe in a for loop, we don't actually have to worry about it running on forever because, well, we know that this is finite. Let's see what happens. All right, basically what's going on here is we're going through every single letter in the strings. Every single iteration of this loop, letter is getting assigned to a new value. So in iteration number one, our first letter is K. So that means if I print letter, then I'm printing 
k because the letter variable is now set to k. In the next iteration, we're at y. So now letter equals y. So when I print letter, it equals y and so on. And of course, letter is just a variable name, right? So we don't actually even have to name it letter. We can name it x and it'll print the exact same thing. So what about a list? Let's do a few strings, subscribe to Kylie Ying. Then for each item in that list, we're gonna print that item. And let's execute this. So you'll see that it goes through each item in this list and it prints that out. So subscribe to Kylie Ying. And what happens to be very cool is that you can actually put loops inside of loops. Let's say I have one list of adjectives. And then let's say I have a list of nouns. Okay, so I want to print each of these adjectives with each of these nouns. So shiny coin, shiny speaker, shiny iPhone. How do I do that? The answer is a nested for loop. So if I say for adjective in adjectives, and then before I print anything, for each noun in nouns, I'm gonna print the two together. Cool, so you'll see that we go over each of these adjectives, shiny, purple, and clear, and then within that, we go through each of the nouns, coin, speaker, iPhone, coin, speaker, iPhone, coin, speaker, iPhone. And so basically, this nested for loop allows you to get every single combination of items in both of these lists. So when we're talking about loops, it's also important to talk about something called control flow. So control flow is how you're controlling the flow of the loop, basically. And we have two statements that fall under this category. One is break and the other is continue. So with a break statement, we can actually stop the loop before it has looped through all the items. If I say print X, but then I'm doing maybe if X equals Kylie break. And then at the very end, I'm still going to print the end. So what do we expect here for each item in this list? Let's change this for our sanity. So word list we expect to get up to Kylie, right? And we're gonna print Kylie, but then when the name equals Kylie, so when this evaluates out to true, we break. So we end the loop, which means that Ying should never actually get printed out. Instead, we should just be printing the end at the end. So let's give this a try. Subscribe to Kylie, the end. Cool. So the break works. And of course, I want to prove to you guys that it also works in a while loop. So I'm going to do i equals one. And then while i is less than five, print i. And then I'm going to say if i equals three, break. And then of course, we have to increment i. And then print the end. We expect to see one, we expect to see two, we expect to see three, right? Because three is still less than five, we're printing three. And then when i equals three, we break, which means that we don't keep going. We actually exit the loop. So we should never see four get printed out like before. Let's give that a try. Cool, so we see one, two, three, the end. And that's because this break statement is forcing us to end the loop early. All right, so the next type of control flow statement that I wanted to go over with you guys is the continue statement. And basically the continue statement allows you to stop that current iteration of the loop and move on with the next iteration. So instead of canceling the entire loop, you're canceling that one iteration of the loop. So let's see how that works. I'm gonna take out this break statement that we had before. And so for name and word list, print name. Okay, but let's say if the name is equal to Kylie, then we continue. What do we expect to see here? Well, we expect to see subscribe, we expect to see two. Now what happens when we're at Kylie? Well, Kylie equals Kylie. 
So we continue, which means that we cancel everything else that happens in this loop, meaning that we go on to ying, right? Ying does not equal Kylie, so we print ying, and then we print the end. So here, what we expect to see is we expect to see subscribe to ying the end. Let's give that a try. Subscribe to ying the end. I hope that makes sense. Basically, the continue statement is just saying, forget about the rest of this loop, go on to the next one. Loops are very powerful because they give you a chance to iterate over and over again on something without having to type that specific command out that many times. You have two different kinds of loops in your toolkit that you can start using now. See you guys next time.